This is quite exciting for me. It's almost an exclusive. We're down at Doncaster Cables and that's not the exclusive. And it's not Aaron that's the exclusive because he's on telly more than most people. <laughs> but there is a new cable and we've got it in front of us here. And this is exciting for me. Yes, yeah, a brand new cable coming off the premise of EV Ultra. Now bringing something into the PV world. The whole point is quicker, neater, easier and safer installation for solar PV systems. Cool, that's, a, that's an opening statement there to grab everyone's attention. <laughs> and that's going to be quite a tricky thing to do with those PV cables, isn't it? Because we often see them, don't we, uh, scattered around in roof spaces and they look remarkably like they're maybe for the satellite TV. And that's one of the problems you've solved, isn't it? Yeah, so one of those problems with looking like a coaxial is many times I've done work in my houses and dropped a coax or split a coax into yep. a kid's bedroom I and mean, then that whole danger of a DIYer potentially cutting something that's 600 volts is, is quite worrying but we've tried to tick as many of the boxes as we can so we're bringing loads of features and benefits we've got some of the products on the table but we've aimed for solar string to isolate an inverter every single time one length of cable no need for all the other bits and pieces okay and that's what we've got in front of us here and you've named it PV Ultra so it's part of the Ultra family it's part of the Ultra family. Okay, my favourite member being Ultra Plus, as I named that one. Yeah, okay, that's a different story for those people who follow the channel regularly. Got in front of us, it looks remarkably like, you know, I'd imagine people are thinking that's a, a, looking like a steel arm and maybe a tough sheath cable, but it's got a real, yeah, nice feel about it. It's very lightweight, obviously, because of the cable construction, but very flexible as well. And you're expecting this to go directly from the panels to the inverter? Yes, that's what we think it'll do. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Because I was envisaging, first of all, maybe an adaptable box, landing into it, bringing my connection from our panels into an adaptable box, this cable down to where the inverter is, but you think we can do that without the adaptable box? Yeah, so currently people are using the single cores, yep. and then when it's coming outside the building, most people are taking it into conduit or some sort of containment yep. or trunking or something like that, and we wanted to make it so you didn't have to do that. So now this cable can yep. be clipped straight to the side of a wall, Okay, I'll just have a... and it's got its own protection, it doesn't need the conduit. Okay, closer look. We've got some writing on there as well, haven't we? So yeah, we cleat that as normal, do we? Just normal cable cleats? Or? Normal cable cleats. The whole cable design is to use standard accessories. So it's normal cable cleats or D-line clips, linear clips, okay. whichever people's preference are. Okay, so, and we've got some writing on there as well, because that's part of it as well. And we've got to have it labeled, haven't we, as well? Yeah, so we're now pre-marking. This now looks like a mains cable. It no longer looks like the coaxial cable. Absolutely. But we wanted to pre-mark it anyway with this danger live during daylight just to bring attention to it so that repeats about every half a meter okay yeah as it comes through so that prevents us from obviously having those labels because that's the other thing isn't it we, we end up putting just the strings in maybe we put mechanical protection but we're going to put tie wraps on with little labels on saying that this is obviously live during daylight we've got that already on the cable saved ourselves another bit of time yeah another bit of time saved and then on the inside we've got the double insulated core still that are required, so we need to have double insulated cores. Cores, and now let's just not get any confusion. This is still providing us with our outer sheath, isn't it? Yeah, we've yep. still got our bedding material, bedding but our material. cores themselves are double insulated because that's a requirement. Yes. Okay, so we've got some cores here. We've got a four core, you do a two core as well, don't you? Yeah, we do a two core and a four core. And if we just snip the end so you can see, this is why SWA cable has currently been advised not to be used because it's only single insulated. Okay, yeah. Um, but this is now class two double insulated insulation on the cores. So I'm seeing red and I'm seeing white, is that the idea? See red, yeah, white in it and then red on the outer. And making it double insulated. Yeah. And what size cable does it come in? So we've got a four millimeter and a six millimeter to okay, start so with. standard stuff, yeah. Yeah, and then we've got a two core and a four core version. So a two core would do a single string solar yeah and the four core would do a dual string solar okay that's all in one and it's brilliant because we've got the two here we've got the four there but when i look at it i think you, you kind of solve the next problem because obviously you're going to have to strip it back we're often going to be in places that are a little bit tricky and we were balancing maybe on joists amongst uh, eight foot of uh, thermal insulation in order to make these ends off are you going to give us a little bit of a demonstration on how to strip this cable yeah we can Let's give see a demo if it is on as that. easy as uh, obviously hopefully is it it's incredibly tactile though isn't it when you're picking it up it's, it's, it's very uh, yeah, it's very not... very flexible um so the actual bedding and the sheathing compound the sheathing is a new compound that we've developed called solar tech okay so this is this is new the this black, is new the black, the black yeah. bit is new it's okay. a Wouldn't new, have known new that, compound we? formulation um very uv stable and it's now got the same anticipated lifespan as the cores, which is 25 years. Oh, right, 25 years, wow. So therefore, we can clip it directly to the, obviously, to a building. We're not worried about the sunlight UV degradation. We've got a two core here, okay, so that's nice. We can clearly see the double insulation as well, now in the bedding material. But so, does it strip easy, Aaron? No pressure. We'll see your hand yeah. there, just jump into focus there when, 
you've had an accident before. <laughs> okay. So stripping this back, there's going to be different methods that people can use. They can either bring the whole cable onto the roof and underneath the string. Okay. Or some people may want to just bring the cores out onto the string and they might need to be able to strip back 10 meters. Okay. So we wanted to make that as easy as we can. So if we just took, might even stand, Ooh, stand up. Standing for it. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll breathe in. Okay. Um, so if we use the EV Ultra stripping tool, we have oh. a PV Ultra stripping tool of course you soon. Do. Yep. So we're going to ring this as we would normally and then we just do that drag, don't we, Dan? Then we just do that drag, blade moves. Oh, so wow. we can very easily... You can tell that's easy as well, can you? Take all that off. And if I was doing 10 metres, I'd just be then doing 10 metres. Wow. Length. Okay, so that's the first bit that's nice and easy. You've got the bedding material now. Now, we don't want to use the blade to strip the bedding material. Okay. We want to make sure that we're not nicking or damaging the cores inside. Okay, so you can use your so, cropping tool because you're used to doing it that way. Remember, choose the most familiar method of stripping. Okay. So if we just take that end off, okay. you'll then see inside, Oh, we have this high tensile rip cord. So you can then, once that gets started, no. you could you, walk- I can see where this is going. The full 10 meters back if you were stripping 10 meters and you oh, just pull it. Look at that. And oh, then- That's the things that we like about, out. obviously, Cat 5 and Cat 6 cables, isn't it? You've embedded that in there as well. And then obviously just tidy the end up as we would normally. Oh look, you're not gonna just... Well, this is really soft, so you can actually just pull it, but you can ring that, you can use a knife. And then I'm just gonna take those rip cords and just snip them back. You got it all covered. Yeah, I mean, that is. So just, just to unpack that again for me there. So you said we could do one of two things. We could take the cable out and have it terminate quite short underneath the panels. Or we could do, obviously, the, the long strings effectively. Maybe we've got this cable laying in a roof space. You've got two options there. Yeah, two options, and it's really important on the four core, we feel, because if you've got two strings, they might be separate sides of the separate, ways, yeah. um, yeah. separate sides of property. So you could do this inside the roof space, take one pair that way and one pair the other way. And I take it, the we've identified them here by, obviously, the colours required, so we know we've got positive and negative, but when we go here, we can see we've got positive and negative on the four core, but. We've got to know which one's with which. That's another thing that we've actually ticked off here with the, the red and white. So one of the issues with the blacks is polarity. Yes. This is now in line with the wiring regulations. So red and white for DC on earth circuits. Yes. Currently what we've got on here is you'll see there's no black dots on that red. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And this oh, one yep. has a black stripe down the side. Yes. This red has a black stripe ah, down the right, side. Okay, so that makes them a pair. And then this would be the other pair. Okay. And you've also used a bit of uh, heat shrink down the end. What's your thinking about using heat shrink? Initial feedback that we've got is people asking how they was going to tidy up this end. Okay. So some people feel like they don't need anything if it's in the loft space. Oh, great. Some people said they were just going to tape it up. Okay. Um, some people are going to put it into a whisker box, junction box. Some people jelly filled. So there's loads of different options okay. and just clamping jelly over it. We found these, which look absolutely enormous they do and we've done a, a whole set of videos on heat shrink and i know depending on the ratio that that's going to get down to the right size yep so you're going to slide that on and then we get a booted seal on the end i like that on the i know uh, one member of the efix team is going to love that and let's say its name's gordon look at that and that makes a nice tidy and you could put a gland on there as well couldn't you yeah you could put a gland on there there's um, multi-hole insert glands so you can get multi-hole inserts where there's two or four um, so there's just loads of different options for termination wise and it's just going to depend on how people want it to look and, and what their preferred choice is so yeah again you would suggest okay there's a team at efix that you've solved a problem out there we had the problem when we bought our ev ultra we had the problem of obviously getting the data communication cables to it or whether we were measuring the current through a ct clamp and now you've uh, solved the problem with a very very tactile and easy to strip cable that means we've now got pv ultra on the market yeah we, th we feel like we've done quite a lot so it's lower time on the installation yeah. less materials no conduit needed um, no elbows no bends no connectors we've got the easy polarity identification we've got the um, inverter to string every single time you don't really need to plan the route anymore where you would have done with no. conduit and yeah, things like that, like that. Um, so yeah we feel like we're ticking quite a lot of boxes to make it a quicker neater easier install have you ever thought about making cable for a living Aaron because you seem to have got this <laughs> down to a fine art <laughs> fantastic if you want to see how some of the cables are made at Doncaster cables check out the videos on screen now